I owe my life to George Bailey. Help him, Lord. Mary, Joseph, Jesus, please help my friend George Bailey. Please, God, help my son George. He never thinks of himself, God. That's why he's in trouble now. George is a good guy. Give him a break, God. I love him, Lord. Please watch over him for me. Please, God, something's the matter with Daddy. Please bring Daddy back.
kids, my friends. Well, you got lots of friends, I can give you that. But <clears throat> you know they've tied up our whole heavenly network for over an hour now. What are you talking about? Prayers, George. When they're heartfelt, they're, they're powerful missiles. And, and the prayers of your friends for you, well, they, they've just tied up the whole celestial system. Why? How? Well, it's because you're so important to so many people, George. You always have been. Boy, yeah. Since when? Since you, uh, well, let's see, since you pulled your brother Harry out of the ice when he fell through and was about to drown. You remember that now. Oh, yeah. Well, that was instinct. Besides, I was only 12. Instinct? There were lots of boys there, George. They were older than you and better swimmers. And they didn't nod to their instincts. Only you did. And that was not instinct. Well, it was my brother. What was I to do? Well, of course he's your brother. But what about Mr. Gower? You remember when you saved Mr. Gower from disaster? That was not instinct. That was courage. That was unmitigated, gut wrench courage. It's because he had received that telegram saying his son had just died. Well, yeah, and he'd gone mean through and through, hadn't he, from trying to drown his sorrows in a bottle. I'm just finishing this order over for the Blaine's. Pills, doctor prescribed. Yes, sir, but. Here, put this away, I'm finished with it. Pills, doctor prescribed. Say, this is poison. They got the theory over the Blaine house, don't they, Mr. Gower? Mm hmm? I see you get the stuff for these capsules from this jar. Get going! Mr. Gower, I, I said get out of here! Yes, sir! Yeah. 
there. I'm sorry, Mrs. Blaine. That package should have been over there an hour ago. I'll have somebody over in about five minutes. Why didn't you deliver that package over to the Blaine? Don't you know that Blaine thing? I couldn't. Why not? What kind of trick are you trying to play, Blaine? No, 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 sorry, Mr. Gower. You lazy loafer. Mr. Gower, you don't know what you're doing. You put something bad in those capsules. What are you talking about? I know you're unhappy. You got that telegram today saying your son died and it upset you. I understand that, but it's not right. I swear it isn't. What do you mean? You just look and see for yourself. I tried to tell you when you were feeling that fever, but you wouldn't listen. It's not right.
Well, yes, Jenny and I are going to miss George. Hey, well, I'm going to miss all of you. Now, that's for certain. Say, Uncle Billy, you might take us back to the house for me. I think I want to drop it on Harry's dance. Okay. Have a good time, son. And heavens above, George, did you have a good time? Tell us about you met Mary Hatch. Well, of course, you've known Mary all your life. She grew up four or five years behind you. And she and Violet, the other girls, were always following you around and trying to play with you boys. But one of you would spot them and run them away, chase them off. But they never gave up. You know, George, it's a funny thing. Little girls tend to notice little boys long before little boys <laughs> notice little girls. Of course, that all changes when little girls get to be young ladies and little boys get to be big boys. <coughs> and all the girls in Bethlehem Falls, especially Violet and Mary, were always chasing after you, but you never took the baby. You, you never paid it. Until that night of Harry's graduation party. That's the night you first really noticed Mary Hatch. Truth be known, you didn't notice anybody but Mary that night. You started dancing with Charleston. And I guess you'd have danced all night except, well, uh, somebody threw the switch on that old movable gym floor. <laughs> and the swimming pool opened up. And everybody either fell or jumped into the pool. Then things really got interesting. Up below, gals, can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Up below, gals, can't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. Hot <laughs> dog, just like the church choir. Beautiful. You know, I had to knock down three guys to get this stuff wearing in that locker room. You should have seen the commotion. I bet over half your classrooms in that pool. Well, half the town said it wasn't a good idea to build a gym floor over the swimming pool. Well, I wonder who turned the key. Well, probably someone jealous because you chose me to dance with you. You think, baby? Well, here, let me hold this old wet dress of yours. Hello. Hello. You know you look at me as if you don't know me. Well, I don't. Well, you pass me on the street almost every day. Me? Uh-huh. No, that was a little girl named Mary Hatch. That wasn't you. <laughs> do I look as funny as you do? Oh, well, I admit I'm not the football type. You, wonderful, Mary. In fact, if it wasn't me talking, I'd probably say you were the prettiest girl in town. Well, then why don't you say it? Well, I don't know. Maybe I will. Say, how old are you anyway? Well, you can't ask that. Well, I am. Eighteen. Eighteen? Why, it was only last year you were seventeen. Well, too young or too old? No, just right. Your age fits you. Yes, sir, you look a little older without any clothes on. Well, I mean, without a dress, you look older. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mary, <laughs> the rope's fine, it's just a rope. Oh. Sir, my train, please. A pox upon me for a clumsy love. Your caboose, my lady. You may kiss my hand. Mary? As I was lumbering down the street, down the street. Oh, I know. I'll throw a rock in that old Granville house over there. Oh, George, don't. I love that old house. No, no, no. See, what you do is you make a wish, and you throw a rock and it breaks some glass. But you got to be a great shot nowadays, because most of the windows are broken in. Oh, George, don't. It's full of romance, that old place. Well, I'd like to live in it. In that old thing? Uh-huh. I wouldn't live in it as a ghost. Watch this. Well, what'd you wish for, George? Well, not one wish. A whole hatful, Mary. You see, I know what I want to do tomorrow, and the next day, and the next year, and the year after that. I'm shaking the dirt of this crummy old town off my feet, and I'm a see the world. Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum. And then I want to go to college and see what they know. And then I want to build things. Like skyscrapers, a hundred stories high, airfields, bridges, a mile long. You gonna throw a rock, Mary? Great shot. What'd you wish for? 
Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. What did you wish for when you threw that rock? Oh, no. Oh, come on, Mary, tell me. Well, if I told you, then it might not prove true. What is it you want, Mary? Do you want the moon? Just say the word, and I'll throw a lasso around it, and pull it down here for you to have. Well, that's what I'll do. I'll give you the moon, Mary. All right. I'll take it. And then Well, you could swallow it. And it would all dissolve, see? And then moonbeams would shoot out of your toes and the tips of your fingers. The ends of your hair. <coughs> Mary, am I talking too much? Yes, you are! Hey, how long have you been here? Why don't you kiss her instead of talking her to death? Hey, I know what I'm doing here, Ernie. Oh, you you know, it's wasted on all the wrong people, Ernie. You're telling me. <laughs> Just wasted. Hey, I, hey, Bert, Ernie, get back here. I'll show you some kissing them and turn your head around. George, 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 you gotta come home quick. Your father's had a stroke. Huh? Mary, I, I, I have to go. I'm, I'm really sorry. Come on, come on. Wait, what? Don't, don't, don't. Did, did you call a doctor? I'm almost there now. sense can ruin this town. That's why I'm going to make a resolution in the next Board of Trustees meeting. A resolution? Yes, a resolution to dissolve the institution and send all the assets and liabilities to receivership. Oh, but Mr. Potter, take a look at this loan application, for instance, uh, for Ernie Bishop. You know, that guy that goes around delivering the mail, except he's usually always late because he's always stopping and talking to everyone on the route. Well, I happen to know that the bank turned down this loan application. He brings it back over here to the building and loan, and we're willing to build him a house worth $5,000. Why? Well, I handled that case first, Mr. Potter. You have all the stuff right there, his salary, his insurance, plus I can personally vouch for his character. No, he's a friend of yours? Yes, sir. 
So you shoot the pool with the manager's son, and you get to borrow money. What does that get the building loan but a discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class? All because a bunch of starry-eyed dreamers get them all stirred up and fill their heads full of possible, impossible ideas. Now, now, just a minute, Mr. Potter. Just hold on. Now, you're right when you say my father was no businessman. Now, I know that. Why he ever started that cheap, penny-ante building alone, I'll never know. But neither you nor anybody else can say anything against his character. Because his whole life, why, in the 25 years since he and Uncle Billy started the institution, he never once thought of himself or saved any money. But he did get a few people out of your slums, Mr. Potter. And what's wrong with that? Just remember this. That rabble that you keep going on about do most of the working, paying, living, and dying in this community. Is it so much that they work, pay, live, and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? My father didn't think so. No. People were human beings to him. But to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. In my book, my father died a much richer man than you'll ever be. Well, I'm not interested in your book, young man. We're talking about the building of loan. I know what you're talking about, Mr. Potter. You're talking about something you can't get your hands on, and it's galling you. That's what you're talking about. Well, thank you for coming by. I'll see you at the meeting. You're not on the board. I hold my father's proxy so I can attend and cast a vote. You see, the way I see it, this town needs our family's one-horse institution if only to have a place without having to crawl to you. Yeah. Sentimental hogwash. Get me out of here. I'm still going to introduce my resolution, young man, and we'll see who's got the power in this town. But you made a stirring, eloquent speech at that board meeting the next day, didn't you, George? And the board voted to Mr. Potter down. On one condition I hadn't banked on, though. Well, yeah, they wanted you to take over for your father, and uh, you did that. And you gave all your money for college to Harry, so he could go to college. Well, that's right. And he became a football star. He made second team All-American. And what about you? <laughs> you just got four years old. Hey, Violet. How's 
house business at your permanent wave shop. Well, it's not a tidal wave yet, but I'm getting some city medicine thanks to you. What gives with you? Ah, uh, nothing. Well, where are you going? I'll probably end up down at the library. Oh, George, don't you ever get tired of just reading about things? Yes. Yes, I do. Say, what are you doing tonight, Violet? Well, not a thing. Well, are you gay? Let's make a night of it, Vi. Oh, George, I'd love to. What do we do? Well, we go up to the fields, take our shoes off, walk through the grass barefoot. Huh? Yeah! We could climb Mount Bedford, see the falls, smell the pines, watch the sunrise against the peaks. We'll be there the whole night. The town will start talking, there'll be a terrific scandal. Wait, walk in the grass in my bare feet? George, have you gone crazy? And Mount Bedford? Who would want to walk all the way to the top of Mount Bedford? That's got to be a ten-mile hike at least. All right, okay. Forget about it. It was a crazy idea. Well, you're telling me. <coughs> Goodbye, George. Yeah. Goodbye, Violet.
honeymoon. Where are we going? Ernie, look at this. See that? There's the kitty. Here, count it, honey. I feel like a bootlegger's fine. Look. <laughs> you know what I think we're going to do? We're going to shoot for the works. A whole week in Bermuda, a week in New York, the richest caviar, the oldest champagne, the hottest music, the prettiest wife. Oh. Oh. That does it, then what? Well, then what, honey? Well, after that, who cares? <laughs> that does it. Come here. Hey, 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 I hate to interrupt anything, but there's something mighty funny going on down at the bank. Never really seen one, but it has all the earmarks of a run. Oh, my God. Well, money in the bank, you better hurry. Oh, Mary, I have to go. Uh, just stay right here. I'll be right back. No, George, please. Please, don't go. Don't go. Please, don't go. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go What's the meaning of this, Uncle Billy? A holiday? It's a pickle, George. It's a real pickle. All right, what happened? How did it start? How does anything like this start? All I know is the bank called along. When? About an hour ago. We had to give them all the cash. All of it? All of it. Every penny. And still wanted us to come alone. Holy mackerel. The whole town's going crazy, George. And I'm sorry I missed your wedding. I know it's a beautiful ceremony. I just, you know, it's just... All right. Out of the way. Make way. Make way. Out of the way. Mr. Potter, what do we owe this grand visit? George, there's a rumor going around that you're going to close your doors early. Is that true? Not for another ten minutes. That's our regular closing time. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you, you okay, George? You want me to call the sheriff? The sheriff? What for? Well, you never know. These mobs can get ugly sometimes. Oh, you? no. I can assure you all of our customers are very polite. I'm sure they are. George, I'm going all out to solve this crisis. Now, I've guaranteed the bank enough funds cover their needs, uh, they'll close for a week and then reopen. You take in charge of the bank. I may lose a fortune, George, but I'm willing to guarantee your people too. Just bring your shares over to the bank and I'll give you 50 cents on the dollar. No, no, that won't be necessary. We can take care of our customers right here. All right. Just remember, George, don't close your doors before 6 o'clock or you won't be able to reopen. Let's go. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Fifty cents on the dollar. You never miss a trick, do you, Father? We're gonna miss this. All right, folks, and don't panic. Don't panic. You heard, Father? The bank will be open in a week. But I've got money here, George, and I'll take it now. Oh, well, now, Miss Andrews, you're thinking of this place all wrong as if the money's here or in a safe somewhere. The money's not here. The money's in the Granger's house, right next to yours, uh, and the Kennedy house, and Mrs. Macklin's house, and a while hundred others. You've loaned them the money to build, and when they can, they'll pay you back. Now, what are you going to do, Miss Andrews? Foreclose on them. I've got $242 in here, George Bailey, and $242 isn't going to hurt anybody. Okay, Miss Andrews, all right. I'll tell you what you do. Sign this, and you'll get your money back in 60 days. 60 days? Uh, well, now, that's what you agreed on when you bought your shares. Oh, come on, Miss Andrews. Stick to your original agreement on this one. 60 days on this. Are you going to go to Potter's? Better to get half than nothing. Uh, now, folks, folks, now, folks, now, folks, now, listen up. Now, listen. <coughs> if Potter gets a hold of this building and loan, there'll never be another decent house built in this town. He has the bus lines. He's got the department stores. He has charge of the bank now. And now he's after us. Why? Because we're cutting in on his business. That's why. Because he wants to keep you living in his slums, paying the kind of rent he decides. Well, we can't let him do that. We can get through this, but we've got to stick together. We've got to have faith in one another. But my husband hasn't worked in over a year, and I need money. How am I supposed to make it to the bank opens, George? We have doctor bills to pay. Yes, George, I need cash. I can't raise my kid on faith. How much do you need? Uh, hey, well, that's right. I have 2,000 bucks here. Thank you, honey. Oh, uh, Miss Andrews, now, uh, how much did you say you needed? $242. Oh, now, Miss Andrews, just enough to tie over to the bank reopens. How much was necessary? I'll take $242. <laughs> All right, there you are, 240. 
That'll close my account. No, your account is still here. That's a loan. Okay, Ernie. George, I've got $300 here. Now, Ernie, what will it take till the bank reopens? How much do you need? I suppose $20 will do. All right, that's much better. Okay, here you are. All right, Mrs. Thompson? But George, it's your own money. Ah, uh, never mind about that, Mrs. Thompson. How much do you need? I can get along with 20, all right. 20, there we go. And I'll sign a paper. No, you don't have to sign anything. That's just a loan. I know you're good for it. Yes, Mrs. Martini. Could we have 1750? 1750. You have 50 cents? I tell you what, you just take over. I think we're gonna make it, George. I think we're gonna make it. <coughs> Ah, Mrs. Bailey. Hello, Mrs. Bailey. How's it going? Booming. Uh, at least you have a place to come home to. Well, most of the windows are broken in, and the roof leaks in a place or two, but the structure's sound and <coughs> it's cracked and savage. Well, what are you talking about? Well, 32 sycamore. 32 sycamore? But that's... Do you remember the night that we broke the windows? That's what I wished for, and I've been saving ever since. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary? You've only been married an hour. One hour, 29 minutes, and 40 some odd seconds to be exact. And that's soon enough to celebrate I would sing with you. Oh, darling, you're wonderful. Four, five, six, bingo! We made it, George. We're still in business. And we still got two bucks left. Well, pop the champagne. I'd say we're a couple of financial oh, wizards. Oh, those Rockefellers. Hey, open the safe up for these great big important simoleons, eh? Hey, if you want the building alone to stay in business, you better have a family real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Wish they were rabbits. <laughs> Did you hear that one, Uncle Billy? Rabbit. Rabbits. Hey, a toast. Here's to rabbits. Bread that was house may never know hunger. Salt that life may always have flavor. And wine, so that joy of prosperity may reign forever. Enter the Martini Castle.
But you haven't let me, George. You've been stopping me. As a matter of fact, you have beaten me. And as anyone in this county knows, that's not an easy thing to do. Take during the Depression, for instance. You and I were the only ones who kept our heads. You saved the building alone, and I saved the rest. You know, most people say you stole all the rest. The envious ones, George. The suckers. Now. I have frankly described my side. Let's take a look at yours. Young man, 27, 28, married, making, say, 40 a week. 45. 45. 45. And out of that 45, you support your wife and your mother, and you pay all the bills. You probably have 10 left if you skim. Child or two comes along, you don't have the 10 anymore. Now, if this young man of 28 were an ordinary common yokel, I'd say he was doing fine. But George Bailey is no ordinary common yokel. He's an intelligent, ambitious young man who hates his job, who hates the building and loan almost as much as I do. A young man who's been struggling to get out on his own ever since he was born. A young man, the smartest of the crowd, mind you, who have to, has to sit by and watch his friends go places. All because he's trapped. Trapped sitting here playing nursemaid to a bunch of garlic eaters. <coughs> now, do I paint an exact, an exact picture or am I exaggerating? What's your point, Mr. Potter? My point? My point is I want to hire you. Hire me? I want you to manage my affairs, George. Run my businesses. I'll start you out at $20,000 a year. <laughs> you wouldn't mind... Uh, Having the nicest house in town, would you, George? Buying your wife the finest clothes, a couple of trips to New York each year, maybe once in a while to Europe? You wouldn't mind that, would you, George? Would I? Look, Mr. Potter, you know who you're talking to, right? This is me. You remember me? George Bailey? Yes, George Bailey whose ship has just come in, provided he's got brains enough to climb aboard. Well, what about the building and loan? Oh, confound it, man. Are you afraid of success? I'm offering you a three-year contract starting out at $20,000 a year. Is it a deal or isn't it? Well, Mr. Potter, I know I ought to jump at the opportunity, but uh, do you think maybe I could have, say, 24 hours to think it over me? Uh, all right, all right. Go home. Talk it over with your wife. I would like that. Meanwhile, I'll draw up the papers. All right, sir. All right, George. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know what my answer is, Mr. Potter. And it's no. No, doggone it! You know, you sit around here, and you spend your little money webs, and you think the whole world revolves around you and your money. Well, it doesn't, Mr. Potter. I'd say in the, well, in the vast configurations of things, you're nothing but a scurvy little spider. You, you, then that goes for you. And that goes for you, too. Ten years ago. 
Yeah, in the meantime, let's see. And your lovely wife has given you not one, but four wonderful children. And your brother, Harry, has been decorated with the Congressional Medal of Honor. President decorates Harry Baker. Well, that was the headlines in this morning's papers. Yeah, this morning. About 10 o'clock. Day before Christmas. That's when it all started, wasn't it, George? Let's see, you were going out to buy a Christmas wreath, and Uncle Harry, Uncle, uh, Uncle Billy, Uncle Billy, Uncle Billy, he was, he was going to the bank, huh? Everything's fine. Mr. Bailey? 
dear. Uh, you may yet. I know, that Mr. Bailey. Perhaps you'll do even better. Uh, may I see you in here? I have some questions. Uh, uh, sure, yeah. I'll be, I'll be, be right there. Where's George? In his office with Violet Peterson. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, this is that. I'm not going to wait. 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 i am not you know, they charge the same for food and rent there as they do in Bedford Falls. Yeah, sure. And don't worry about it. It's just a loan. That's my business, building a loan. Besides, you'll get a job. Good luck to you. I'm glad I know you, George Bailey. Say hello to New York for me. And let's hear from him. Yeah, <coughs> sure. Well, what's the matter, Bob? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, George. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey, there seems to be a problem here. A no problem? How do you mean? Uh, George, George, could, could I talk to you for a minute? I'll alone. Uncle Billy, what is it? Oh, George. What? Oh, was that your bad ear? No. Then you heard what I said. I'm afraid so. How much? That much? Now, now, look, did you, uh, did you buy anything? No, 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 you're going to stick a gun. Are you sure you had the money with you? I, I was counting it, I think. You think? Uncle Billy, we have to find that money. Oh, George, I'm no good for you. Uh, now, now, listen, uh, is there some place in your house that you may have put it? Some place you could have uh, hid the money? No, no, nothing like that. <laughs> well, come on, now, think. Think hard. I've been thinking, George. I'm thinking and thinking, and I can't think anymore. It, it, it hurts. You know what this means? <laughs> it means bankruptcy. It means scandal. And prison! No! Yes! No! That's what it means! No! One of us is going to jail. Well, it's not going to no, be me! No! No!
Janie, I think that is the best yet. I want, I want my piano solo to be perfect for the party tonight. And I'm sure it will be, sweetheart. Especially if I keep practicing hard. Oh, Peter, be careful. Don't put too much tinsel on that side of the tree, okay? Okay, I'm spreading it out. See? And you're doing a fine job. Nice! Why don't you help put these things <coughs> on the tree? <coughs> well, hello, darling. Hello, hello Daddy. Daddy! Hello, Daddy! Well, how do you like it? <coughs> Bless, Bless you! But did you bring the Christmas wreath? Daddy, did you bring the Christmas wreath? Wreath? What wreath? Well, the Christmas wreath for the door. No, I, uh, must have left that in the office. Well, is it snowing? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it just started. Where's your coat and hat? Must have left those at the office. Something the matter? No, no, nothing's the matter. Everything's all right. Wasn't it wonderful about Harry? I bet I had 50 calls today, George, about the parade, the banquet, oh, your mother's so Must she tonight. keep playing that? She's practicing for the party tonight, Daddy. Practicing for the party tonight, Daddy. Mom says we can stay up to, till midnight and sing Christmas carols. We can play it too, Daddy. Daddy, the Browns next door have a new car. You should see it. Well, what's the matter with our car? Isn't it good enough for you? Yes, Daddy. Well, you better hurry and shave, George. The families will be here any minute. Families? I don't want any families over here, Mary. What's the matter with you, little one? Oh, she got a cold. She caught it coming home from school. Well, they gave her a prize flower, and she didn't want to crush it, so she didn't let another crow. Go to bed, darling. My flower, eh? She's a drink. What's the matter? Do you have a sore throat or what? Just a cold. The doctor said nothing serious. The doctor? The doctor was here? Well, yes, I called him right away. Well, do you have a temperature or what? I don't think so. 99.6, but she'll be all right. You better get back upstairs, little one. This floor is really cold. My flower, she needs a drink. Now. Uh, I'll bring it back in a minute, George. No, I'm along. This is house. Draft the old barn. It's like living in a refrigerator. I'm surprised we don't have pneumonia by now. George, what's wrong? Daddy, how do you spell frankincense? How should I know? Ask your mother. Hello. I'll get it. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Bailey. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Welch. The doctor says she'll be in fine in time to have her Christmas dinner. Oh. Is that Zuzu's teacher? Yes. Let me speak to her. Hello, Mrs. Welch? Yeah, this is Zuzu's father. Say, what kind of teacher are you anyhow, sending my child home like that half naked? George! Do you realize that she could catch pneumonia on account of you? George! You know, is this the kind of thing I'm paying my taxes for? So stupid, silly, insensitive people like you can send my children home neglected? You know, maybe they're not the most best dressed. Maybe they don't have the most decent of clothes. Ah. Mrs. Welch, I just want to apologize. Hello? Well, George, she come up. Oh, hey, her up! I'll get it. Hello, who is this? Oh, Mr. Welch. I'm so glad you called. It gives me a chance to tell you what I really think about your wife. George. Oh, you will, huh? Well, I tell you what, Mr. Welch. You march right on down here when you think you're man enough. And... He hung up. Daddy, how do you spell hallelujah? What do you think I am? A, a dictionary? Janie, have you not learned that stupid tune already? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this house. I'm sick of this town. I'm sick of my whole rotten life! Mary, I... I didn't mean to. Tell me... Pete... Pete, what is it you wanted to know? Janie. Janie, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you go on now and then practice. Well, go on, play! Oh, Daddy! George, why must you torture the children? Mary, I, I'm no good. I never should have. I never should have. Hello? Operator Bedford 247, please. Is Daddy in trouble? Shall I pray for him? Yes, Janie, pray very hard. Me too. You too, Tommy. Hello? Uncle Billy.
Mr. Potter. It's all right. Some sort of an accident. My company is short on its accounts. The bank examiner out there today, and well, I need to raise eight thousand dollars immediately. So that's why the reporters were calling over here. The reporters? Yes, sir, they they call me from the building and loan. Yeah, they want to talk to you, and there's a, a someone from the DA's office that he wants to speak. Mr. Potter, please, can't you see what this means to my family, to my company? I'll pay any sort of a, a business, uh, no, no, an interest on the loan, a, any kind of a bonus. Why, if you still want the building alone? Could it I be could... that there's some discrepancy in the books, George? No, sir, no, sir. There's, there's nothing wrong with the books. I just, well, I seem to have misplaced $8,000. You misplaced $8,000? Yes, sir. Have you notified the police? Well, no, sir. I didn't want the publicity. You see, Harry's homecoming oh, is yes, tomorrow. Yes, they're going to buy that. What have you been doing, George? Playing the market with the company's money? No, sir, I have not. Well, what is it, a woman then? It's all over town. You've been giving money to Violet Peterson. What? No, not that it matters to me. It makes no difference to me. But why did you come to me? Why don't you go to Sam Wainwright and ask him for the money? I couldn't get a hold of him. He's in Europe. Well, what about all of your other friends? Mr. Potter, they can't help me in a situation like this. You know that. I see. So all of a sudden, I've become quite important, have I? <clears throat> well... What kind of security can you give me, George? Do you have any stocks, any bonds, any real estate, any collateral of any kind? Well, I have this $15,000 life insurance policy. What equity do you have in it? 500? 500. Look at you, George. You used to be so cocky. You're going to go out and conquer the world. You once called me a warped, frustrated young old man. Well, what are you but a warped, frustrated young man, crawling in here, a miserable little clerk, begging for help? You no. Know, all you've got for equity is $500 in this life insurance policy. You're worth more dead than you are alive. Why don't, why don't you go and check out all the riffraff that you love so much? Why don't you ask them if you can have $5,000? You know why not? Because they'd run you out of town on a rail, that's why. Tell you what I'm going to do for you, George. Since the state examiner's still in town, and I'm a board member of the building and loan, I'm going to call and swear out a warrant for your arrest. No, no, uh, Miss, Misplacing the funds, manipulation, malfeasance, misappropriation. No, 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 that's can't be. Yeah, it's all right, George. <coughs> You can't hide in a little town like this. Let's go. God, you got to help me out on this one.
You go on, Ernie. I'm, uh, I'm waiting on somebody. Well then, George, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <coughs> God, dear Father in heaven, I'm not a praying man. But if you're up there and you can hear me, I'm at the end of my rope. And that's where I came in. <laughs> you mean you heard my prayer up there? Well, yeah, yours and uh, several dozen others, George. You, you, you'd be surprised how many people are concerned about you, my boy. Not after they find out I've ruined their lives. You haven't ruined their lives. Besides, it wasn't really your fault, you know? Well, sure it is. I'm president of the company. I'm to be held accountable. <coughs> Ask Mr. Potter. He'll tell you all about that. How do you think it'll make everybody happy if you just kill yourself, huh? I don't know. Maybe I should have just have never been born. Don't say things like that. I've been trying to tell you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, 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 what did you say? I said I wish I'd never been born. You know, that might do it. That just might. What do you think? Huh? Yeah, that might do it. Okay, George, you got your wish. You have never been born. You don't have to make such a fuss about it. I what did you say? Said you don't have never been born. You don't exist. You got no problems. You got no obligations. You got no eight thousand dollar problem. You got no Mr. Potter running around town with a sheriff looking for it. Say something else in that ear. Uh, you can hear out of it because you didn't lose it since you were never born and fell through the ice. So you can hear out of it. Huh? Well, that's the doggonest thing. I haven't heard anything out of this ear since I was a kid. <laughs> Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Hey, who's been talking right there? Who's saying to them? We wish you a Merry Christmas. Dominic? Uh, that's my name, and this is my voice. If you want some? Mr. Martini, it's me, George. Whoa, Dominic, he knows your name. Now we gotta sing. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Where's Mrs. Martin? Shh! They're home. They're all home, and it kind of makes it a good Christmas. Don't it, fellas? <laughs> and she was just here. Her, and lots of other women and children, too. What? What are you talking about? Whoa, whoa. You're not trying to snitch on us, are you? I know you. You hit me just a minute ago. I did? Did you hear that? I already hit him. Did it hurt? I'll try it again. <laughs> hey, oh, wait no. a minute, wait a minute, fellas. <laughs> Let's leave him alone, man. I like he's worse off than you are. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 look out. There comes that panhandler. He's caught up to us again. Let's, let's get out of here, fellas. Hey, you got a dime or two I can borrow? Or maybe even a drink. I'll sell for a drink. Mr. Gower. It's me, George. What's wrong with you? I, I, I don't like messing around this guy. Yeah, let's get out of here. Come on. Mr. Gower. It's me, George Bailey. I used to work for you when I was a kid on the, the corner drugstore. Oh, now I know I don't like you. That rum had spent 20 years in jail for poisoning a kid. Yeah, and if you know him, you must be some kind of jailbird yourself. Come on, guys, let's, let's go, huh? Yeah. Hey, 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 it's you, a Merry Christmas. Hey! Merry Christmas. Hey, wait for me. You see, George, you weren't there to keep Mr. Gower from putting the poison in the mess. What do you mean I wasn't there? I remember it distinctly. Look, <coughs> what's going on here? Who are you? I told you, George, I'm your guardian angel. I'm looking out for you. I, I don't get it. Well, that's what you asked for. It's what you wanted. It's what you said. You, you said you wish you'd never been born. You wanted to see what the world would be like without you. Not born. Not born. That's right. What do you mean? 
do you mean I wasn't born? I was born right here in Bedford Falls on July 12, 1907. I graduated from the local high school. You won't find any public record of it. And besides that, this is not Bedford Falls. This is Pottersville. Pottersville. There is no Bedford Falls. There is no George Bailey. There never has been a George Bailey. Don't you see? You've been given a great gift, George. It's a gift of seeing what the world would be like if you'd never been in it.
Well, look around you, Bert. It's moving. It's breathing. It's alive. Oh, Merry Christmas, Bert. I'm taking you home. No, Bert, I'm fine. Honest. Come on. Thank you. 